Howdy, howdy, this is Mr. Potter. In our previous lessons, we've talked about several different things that we could manipulate. Uh, in our most recent lessons, we've been talking about numerical data that we can manipulate through the int and double and char. And technically, Boolean is a type of numeric. We'll be dealing more with Booleans later. Booleans really are a state of one and zero, or true and false. And we've also talked about the string class, something that we could create to deal with words of and phrases and sentences, groups of text. And we'll be talking in the later series of videos about how we can uh, get more information out of those. But the one thing I want to talk about is Java's ability to create segments of code that allow you to uh, either simulate objects in the real world, such as bugs or flowers, like we did with the case study, or where we can emulate concepts like strings, which are, are human constructs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to create one of those constructs in our own code. And so what we're going to be doing is writing a class that's going to emulate a fraction. And then we're going to go through the development of this class together, and then we're also going to talk about how to use this class in some type of driver or runner program. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a brand new file. So file, new file. I'm going to create an empty Java file, and I'm going to call this fraction. And we're going to be doing the same thing we normally do, public class fraction. But I'm not going to do public static void main. The thing is, this is not code that's going to be driving or running. This is the code for the object. So what we have to do is we have to tell it how to make a fraction. And so the first question I have is, what does a fraction have? In other words, what are its properties? And if I think about a fraction, a fraction is really a ratio of two integers. Uh, it's an integer on top and an integer on bottom. And of course, we call the top integer a numerator and the bottom integer a denominator. So I'm going to create two variables. One is going to be a numerator and one is a denominator. One of the things that we have to be careful with in Java is we have to give some type of protection to keep other programs from changing our data. And we noticed that if we wanted the bug to work a certain way, I didn't physically change the coordinates of the bug. I had to tell the bug to move to a location. I, could, I had to tell the bug to move, and I had to tell the bug to turn. I had specific ways to manipulate the bug. And I want to do the same thing here. I want to have specific ways to interact with this fraction. And so I don't want someone just to come in and willy-nilly change the numerator or change the denominator without me being ready for the change. Because I expect this to act a certain way and I need that protection. So what I do in front of the int is I put the word private. And what this means is that the fraction class is the only thing that can deal with these variables. So this is a level of protection, what we call encapsulation. I'm protecting these variables from the outside world. I'm protecting these variables from anything that might use the fraction that I'm creating. So I've got a private int numerator and a private int denominator. So these are two properties that my fraction has. My fraction has a numerator and my fraction has a denominator. So what I need to do next is I need to talk about how do I create a fraction. And so I need to talk about two things here. One, what is the most basic fraction? Because we often have to talk about it from the very basics, like what's the most basic fraction that I can think of? And the most basic fraction that I can think of is the fraction 0 over 1 because it has the simplest denominator that you can have. You can't have a denominator of 0, but you can have a denominator of 1. And it's got the simplest numerator that I can think of, 0. 
And of course, this fraction is real easy to work with. It doesn't reduce. It has a very precise value, 0. And so it's probably the best case of what our most basic fraction would be. So what I need to do now is, how do I create a fraction? I have to have something called a constructor. And a constructor is a special method that we allow other programs to create a fraction object. So I'm going to go ahead and do the header for my constructor. Now I want other programs to be able to use this, so this is going to be a public method. And I want people to just be able to call on new fraction, so it's going to be fraction with no parameters. And this is something we call default constructor. It's the default constructor because it's the constructor without any parameters. It's the constructor without anything in the parentheses. It's the most basic fraction we can make. Kind of like when we were dealing with our bugs, the basic bug was a red bug. The basic rock was a black rock. The basic actor was a blue actor. And then we had the ability to change those properties by saying, you know, bug berry gets new bug parentheses color dot blue or color dot green. Where if I put something in the parentheses, it changed it from being just an ordinary bug to a very special bug. This is my default constructor, public fraction. And so what this is, is basically instructions on how to create the simplest possible fraction. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the purpose of a constructor is to initialize the properties, what we'll often call instance variables. I have two variables here. I have two properties that we have, a numerator and a denominator. Every constructor has to set those up so that we can use the object. And so I need to set this up in such a way that I'm setting my numerator and denominator to make this fraction object be a fraction 0 over 1. And so that means I'm just going to assign them. I'm going to say numerator equals 0 and denominator equals 1. That's all that I'm doing here. I'm setting this up so that I have my fraction with a numerator of 0 and a denominator of 1. And later on, if I want to use this, I would just say fraction f gets new fraction. And there's nothing in the parentheses. So that fraction f would represent the fraction 0, 1. So that's my boring fraction. So now I want to talk about, okay, how do I make a more exciting fraction, a fraction that the user could deal with? One of my favorite fractions is 355 over 113 because it's really close to the value of pi. It's actually within five decimal places accurate for pi. It's a wonderful approximation. It's one of my favorite fractions. So if I wanted to create this fraction, I would want to create it by saying something like fraction pi gets new fraction. And then in the parentheses, I'd want to specify, I want my numerator to be 355, and I want my denominator to be 113. And that's what I would want my statement to look like. So I need to make sure that this constructor that I'm creating can accommodate two numbers, one for a numerator that I would assign, and one for a denominator that I would assign. So what I would do is I would have public fraction, but I would have two parameters, one thing called a new numerator and something called a new denominator. And so what this is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow the user, whoever's creating this fraction object, to set up a fraction with a very specific numerator, this new numerator, and a very specific denominator. These are values that are being passed to us through the method, through this constructor. And I have to assign those values to these instance variables. So I have to say numerator gets new numerator. And denominator gets new denominator. So this is going to allow us to create a fraction with a very specific numerator and a very specific denominator. So this is our fraction 
class. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and I'm going to compile this. I'm not going to run it because there's no main method here. There's nothing to run. If I want to run this, I actually have to create a separate program to run this program. In other words, I want to kind of keep fraction by itself in this one package, encapsulated, safe, while I twiddle with this fraction driver, this fraction main, or this fraction runner. So I'm going to create one more file. I'm going to make sure that it's in the same location as my existing file. So this is in my documents file. And I'm going to call this fraction runner. And this is going to be where my main is. So public class fraction runner. And then public static void main string args. So I'm going to do something like fraction uh, f gets new fraction and that is a call to the default constructor. And then I'm going to say fraction pi gets new fraction and I'm going to give it the old 22 over 7. So my first parameter is 22 and my last parameter is 7. And this is good enough for 3.142. I mean, it's, it's good enough for local uses of pi. I mean, if I'm not going to try and launch a rocket based off of this value. But it's reasonable enough for, for all my purposes. Um, so this is a call to what we call the overloaded constructor. In other words, this constructor is another version of the constructor. It just has more information. I'm overloading the constructor because I have two constructors with the exact same name. They have a different footprint. They have a different template. They have a different signature for these parameters, these values that I can pass. One of them is the default constructor. It has nothing inside the parentheses. The other one has two integers inside the parentheses. So it has a different signature. And I'm going to create one more object. So fraction uh, better pi gets new fraction and my favorite one 355 over 113. So this is another call to the overloaded constructor. <clears throat> Now, this has a main, so I can run this program, but all it's going to do is just create some objects, and it's not going to do anything, because I'm not printing these objects, I'm not making the fractions add or subtract or multiply or divide. All I'm doing is just creating these objects. So this is the end of our first video. Uh, the first thing we were doing here, the whole purpose of this, is to talk about instance variables, to talk about these... Uh, variables, these properties that my object has. I wanted to talk about a default constructor, a constructor that basically creates the most basic version of this object. And then I also wanted to talk about this overloaded constructor. What I have here is an overloaded constructor. And it's called an overloaded constructor because it has a different parameter signature. In other words, instead of having a parameter signature that's empty, like my default constructor does, I have a parameter signature with two. And I could create another constructor that only had one parameter, because remember, any integer can be made a fraction by putting it over one. I certainly could create another fraction, and I could overload it again by having a fraction constructor with just a numerator and just assume that my denominator is going to be 1. As a matter of fact, that's probably a good exercise for you to do here. So, in our next episode, we're going to talk about how can I get data out of this fraction. Because these variables are private, it really serves no purpose to have a fraction where we can't look at the numerator and we can't look at the denominator. And the answer to that is that we have to set up a way for the person to look at this stuff without actually giving them the opportunity to change it. And so that's where we're headed in our next video. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.